In this lesson, we're going to break down the Stingray interface. All right, so whenever you first bring up Stingray, you're going to notice that there are several sections around the interface. And we're just going to break those down into major sections so that way you know what each section does. And you'll be able to follow along a little bit easier as we go throughout these tutorials. So starting right up here at the top, we have the file menu. The file menu is going to give you access to a lot of the different functions and tools inside of Stingray. It's pretty standard across most pieces of software. Now beyond the menu bar, we have the level viewport. And as you can see, I've loaded a level in here just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. Now inside of the level viewport, you'll be able to navigate in your level. You'll be able to place and manipulate objects to create levels and to create gameplay. So this is basically our eye into our world. Now inside the level viewport, you also have the toolbar here on the left side. The toolbar is going to be pretty important to you because it's going to allow you to test your levels. You can run a project in a separate window. It'll also give you the tools that you need to manipulate objects in the scene. So moving, rotating, and scaling. Uh, you'll also have some options for precision movements as well. Now beyond the toolbar, we have level flow. And you can see that it's docked in this section as another tab. So in level flow, you'll see we have this graph. And the graph allows us to place nodes and hook those nodes together to create interactions in our games. So beyond the level flow, let's move over to Explorer and Create. The Explorer allows us to see the objects that are in our scene. So for example, let's go over to Level Viewport and let's expand Units. You'll see that all of these units are in my scene. So if I were to select one, you would see that it highlights right here inside of the scene. So a very quick way to find objects you're looking for. And whenever you get levels that are expansive like this, you can get a very long list. You could also search inside of that Explorer. So let's say that I wanted to find Disco. You can see that as I do that, it starts to eliminate the objects that do not match that description. Let's go ahead and remove that. Now, beyond the Explorer, we have the Create tab. And the Create tab is going to be very helpful for us because we can create things like helpers, which has subcategories like navigation, miscellaneous items, and rendering items. So navigation has to deal with AI pathfinding. Miscellaneous will be things like triggers and markers. Uh, we can create volumes and even audio sources. And then rendering is going to help us with decals, which can be placed on buildings as graffiti. So it's basically just a texture that is projected down onto a surface. And then we have reflection probes. So to keep from getting too deep into that, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. We have cameras, objects, and most importantly, inside of objects, we have primitives. And this allows us to create prototypes very quickly. So let's say that we don't have any of these buildings finished, but we want to go ahead and get started with the prototype of our level. We can place cubes in and stand in for those buildings, and then we can replace them later. You also have some other objects that you can use as well. You have prototypes, which will allow you to draw out specific shapes and make those into 3D. We have splines, and then we even have terrain capabilities. Now we also have lights, and you'll see that this light, we can drag it in and we can change its type to whatever we need. So it can be an omnidirectional light, it could be a spotlight, or even a directional light. Um, we'll talk more about lights in the coming lessons. Now beyond the Create tab, let's go down to our Property Editor. The Property Editor is going to allow us to edit the properties of the selected object. So as you can see, I have the Air Conditioner selected here. And if I go down to my properties, you'll see that I have access to its transform information, the unit information, as well as material that is on it, and if it's being enabled with beast light mapping. You also have the ability to select certain components of an object. So the properties that you see belong on the root of that object. So you'll see that there's no change. But if I go down into the air conditioning properties, of the B settings, you can see that I can change other things here. So don't forget about the components of a property. So now that we've learned about the property editor, let's go down to the asset browser. The asset browser is probably one of the most important parts of Stingray because it allows you to manage your assets. All of your assets will live here, and then you can drag and drop those right into your level viewport, making it very quick to create levels in Stingray. You'll also have other assets as well, not just models and things like that. You'll also have scripts 
and certain uh, files that are there. And we'll talk more about those as it comes into context. Now beyond the asset browser, we have our log, log console. And the log console is going to give you messages that are important to your project. So you may have errors that will show up in red. You may have warnings that show up in yellow. And then general information that show up in blue. You could also filter those out. So if you're looking just for your errors, you can simply click on the errors and it will show you what you have. Now, I don't have any errors, but I do have a couple of warnings. And we can talk about how to take care of those at a little later time. So now that we've talked about the log console and how it's useful, we finally have the asset preview. The asset preview is going to allow you to preview your asset that you have selected inside of your asset browser. So it makes it very easy to inspect a certain asset make a decision on whether you want to put that in or not and then begin building your levels. So now that we've talked about the interface and we've broken it down, let's go ahead and move on into our next lesson where we're going to talk about viewport navigation.